I think we can get started then. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum everybody. Jumaa Mubarak. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afkiru wa na'auzu billah min shuluri anfusina wa min sayyati amalina. Man yahdihi Allah fula mudillala wa man yudlil fula hadiyala. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa Allahu wa ahduhu la shariqa la wa anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu. Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu attukullaha haqqa tukatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Ya ayyuhal nas attaku rabukum alazi khalakakum min nafsin wahida wa khalaka minha zawjaha wa basa minhuma. رجال كثير ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ربي اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اما بعد my dear brothers and sisters i bear witness that there is no God worthy for worship except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger, is his last messenger. Alhamdulillah, I am absolutely delighted that once again I have the opportunity, the privilege to be here talking to you and continue sharing with you my reflections on the divine names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, today I'd like to talk to you about three names, Al-Samad, Al-Qadir, and Al-Muqtadir. Um, Al-Qadir and Al-Muqtadir, I'll combine those together and, and talk about those separately, but we'll start with uh, Al-Samad, inshallah. With any names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, our goal is to learn about our creator and take away lessons that we can apply in our own lives. We all recognize that our daily struggles get in our way. You know, sometimes we make the intention, you know, and that is all that we can muster up for that day. And that is okay. You know, if we continue to struggle for the sake of Allah ta'ala, it is better for us. And I'll talk about Al-Samad first and then talk about uh, those other two names. But Al-Samad means the eternal, the sustainer. And the name Al-Samad is found in only one place in the Quran. And that place is Surah Al-Khlas. So if you recall uh, Surah Al-Khlas, it is Kul Allahu Ahad, Allahu Samad, Lam Yalid wa Lam Yulad wa Lam Yakul Lahu Kufu Wan Ahad. Say, O Prophet, He is Allah. One and indivisible. Kulhu Allahu Ahad. Allah, the sustainer needed by all. Allah Husamad. He has never had any offsprings, nor was he born. Lam Yalid, Walam Yulad. And there's none comparable to him. Walam Yakullahu, Kufu Wan Ahad. And we learn from the second verse in this surah that Allah is the sustainer, meaning Allah is over all things competent. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the eternal. Not only that. I'd like to also remind myself and those listening that Surah Khlas is also cited by our Prophet Sallallahu as the equivalent of reciting one third of the Quran. That is, if you recite this chapter of the Quran, it is as if you have recited one third of the Quran. Now, as an aside, logic would dictate to us that if you take one third of something and repeat it two more times, it's one whole. As far as I know, this is not the case with Surah Al-Khlas. You know, this chapter in the Quran covers one of the three main themes in the Quran. And the three themes in the Quran are the stories and the parables from which we can learn, the Muslim teachings specific to, um, you know, being a mu'min, and the belief in the unseen. So that would include Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the angels, the hellfire, the paradise, and so on. So the belief in the unseen is what Surah Al-Khlas is talking about, specifically relating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So coming back to our, um, you know, discussions, from the hadith, we also learned that the Prophet Sallallahu when praying two rakats before the two fard rakats uh, of the Fajr Salah, used to recite Surah Al-Kafirun in the first rakat and Surah Al-Ikhlas in the second rakat after uh, Surah Al-Fatiha. So going back to Al-Samad, the name of Allah, we should remind ourselves that we're entirely dependent on Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Every success we experience, every calamity we experience is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. You know, we like to believe that we are in control every waking hour of the day. You know, and, and why not? You know, that's, that's kind of the messaging that's out there for most of us. However, think about the last time every single thing went exactly as you planned. Everything to the last details. Can you recall such a time? And if you do recall such a time when your planning went exactly as you conceived it to be all the way down to the smallest details, then I have a follow-up question for you. Are you able to predict the future? 
And if you answer no, then perhaps you should reconsider why you believe everything went according to plan in your mind. Because to make such a claim is also to imply that you are in control of your circumstances, which also includes yourselves. So we can never make such a claim. You know, for example, when we go to sleep at night, there is no guarantee that we will wake up the next day. When we drive out to work, there is no guarantee that we will return home later that afternoon or that evening. And when we do something as simple as chores around the house, there is no guarantee that one of our organs will stop working uh, at any minute. And our breathing, something that we take for granted, there's absolutely no guarantee that the next breath we take is not our last breath. And, and all of these things should remind us you know, about our connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, we are dependent, but we take it for granted that everything is within our control. You know, if you ever competed in sports, you may be familiar with the concept of sizing up your competition. Sizing up your competition generally means you have to know everything you can know about your opponent in the next match so that you can defeat them during that match. And this might include watching past matches, to study any weaknesses, looking at statistics, little details like that. And all that effort and all that work is meant for coming up with a plan to defeat them in a match. Yet, the win in that match is not guaranteed. And we can't guarantee that win. And when was the last time you tried to size up Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When was the last time you tried to size up Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's power? And my dear brothers and sisters, if we think about Allah from the lens of a competitor, we will know that there is no defeating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, you know, Fir'aun tried to project himself as, uh, you know, God, as, as this deity worthy of worship. You know, when we try to size up Allah, we will realize that Allah is not looking to overpower us in a match or in any manner whatsoever. On the contrary, Allah is our caretaker who's looking to bring us all to Jannah. And that is a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, Allah promises us that, you know, you follow this path, there is going to be a good reward for you at the end of the day. But Allah also promises that Allah will fill the hellfire with those who disbelieve and those who disobey and follow the path of shaitan. So that too is a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah, the caretaker, has given us this opportunity and relieves us of all of these stresses that we try to put on ourselves. You know, there's an authentic hadith recorded in um, at tirmidhi by Abdullah bin Burayda al-Islami. Uh, it was narrated from his father to him who said, the Prophet sallallahu heard a man supplicating and he was saying, Allahumma inni as'aluka bi anni ashhadu annaka anta allaha la ilaha illa anta al-ahdu samad Oh, indeed, I ask Allah, I ask you by testifying that you are Allah. There is none worthy of worship except you, the one, as-samad, the one who does not beget nor was begotten, and there is none who is like him. And to which the Prophet ﷺ responded, by the one in whose hand is my soul, he has asked Allah by his greatest name, the one which if he called upon by it, he responds, when he's asked by it, he gives. And that name is Al-Samad. And my dear brothers and sisters, we all have physical, mental, financial, uh, even spiritual needs. It behooves us to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's aid when we are seeking to fulfill any of our needs. And there's another hadith that I want to uh, reference here, also recorded in At-Tirmadi and narrated by Ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas was one of the youngest uh, sahabas um, who accepted Islam and was uh, spent a lot of time with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi learning directly from him. And, to, and, and, you know, this benefited him and he became one of the, the people we look to for, um, you know, narrations, authentic narrations from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi And in this hadith, um, it was narrated by Ibn Abbas that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, I will teach you a statement. Be mindful of Allah and he will protect you. Be mindful of Allah and you will find him before you. When you ask, ask Allah. When you seek aid, seek Allah's aid. Know that if the entire creation were to gather to do something to benefit you, you would never get any benefit except that Allah had written for you. And if they were to gather to something, to do something to harm you, you would never be harmed except that Allah had written for you. So my dear brothers and sisters, this is just a, a reminder 
for us that we need to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we need to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking care of us. Now let's talk about the, the other two names. You know, Al-Qadr, the most powerful, and Al-Muqtadir, the overpowering. These two names uh, happen to share the same triliteral root, which is Qaf, Dal, Ra, which can mean one of two things, power and ability of making manifest the measure of something. So individually, we have an awareness that Allah is, is powerful. Everything is in control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing is beyond Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ability. And we know this in multiple places in the Quran. You know, one of the places we know is, is in Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, when Allah tells us, Kun fayakun, be and it is. So that is as easy as it is for Allah to create something or to bring something back to life and so on. And, and we see this in our day-to-day -day lives. You know, if you, if you look around, every single day there's a miracle happening around us. You know, when the sun rises, and the moon follows. When creatures are born while others die, when we go about our day without thinking about every breath we take, you know, Allah has the power and this power is on full display for us. Every single day, we just need to pay attention to it. And we, when we examine power, you know, we come to understand that it is the ability to impose the will of the one possessing power over the one subjugated by the power. The one who is powerful can choose to impose their will or choose not to impose their will. The one with power is not conditioned to project that power on a specific trigger either, meaning they can choose when they want to project power. And the all-powerful, Al-Qadir, is the creator of the universe and everything within it. And there are multiple places in the Quran where Allah's power is described. For example, in Surah Al-Isra, verse 99, we are told, have they not realized that Allah who created the heavens and the earth can easily recreate them? And when trying to differentiate, um, you know, the two names being so similar and sharing the same root, when we try to differentiate the nuances between them, um, you know, we can turn to Al-Ghazali, who describes that Allah is the one who does what he wills, does not act if he so wills, and is not so conditioned as to will unnecessarily. And all of that is to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala examines every situation and acts in the best way possible always. Whether it means the destruction of communities to protect the believers, to bringing success to another community, and even bringing us all back to life on the day of judgment. And we can find examples of all of these in the Quran. And there's no doubt in the heart of the believer that we will all return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will judge our actions on the day of judgment. And we would learn if we did enough good in this world to earn a place in paradise or a place in hellfire. And we're reminded about this in Surah Zumar verses 30 to 34. And I'm going to quote here, uh, you, O prophet, will certainly die and they will die too. Then on the day of judgment, you will all settle your dispute before your Lord, who then does more wrong than, who, than those who lie about Allah and reject the truth after it has reached them. Is hell not a fitting home for the disbelievers? And the one who has brought the truth and those who embrace it, it is they who are the righteous. They will have whatever they desire with their Lord. That is the reward of the good doers, uh, end quote. So my dear brothers and sisters, imagine with me that our goal is only to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seeking this pleasure means that we do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared halal for us. And halal means permissible for us to do. That which is permissible is stated for us in the Quran, clearly. These are the guardrails that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. What happens if we go over those guardrails? We should try to come back on the path as quickly as we can before we get stuck outside of those guardrails. And if we live our lives with the bounds of what is permissible, then we're going to be in a constant state of worship. So this idea that we are we are supposed to be in this constant state of worship doesn't mean that you're always just only doing one thing, which is worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in salah, or only giving zakah, or only performing hajj, or only helping your neighbors, or only fasting. There's a lot more to it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows this, that we as human beings, if you give us repetition over and over again, we're going to fall off the rails. So Allah has told us, listen, these are the guardrails. This is the lane in which you must stay in. And this is how you will be in constant worship of me. And being in a state of worship is what Allah has created us for. 
And we also know this from the Quran. In Surah Dhariyat, verse 56, Allah tells us, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّةَ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I did not create jinn and humans except to worship me. And if we were to worship anyone, it should be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the all-powerful, the overpowering. There is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, the folly of mankind is that we chase power. We can attain power over others in this world if others submit to our will. And that's what it takes. Our submission of will to somebody else to say that that person has power over us. And who better to submit our will to than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And the ultimate power belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we as usurpers of power cannot bring the dead to life or even create new life on our own. Yet, we seek to be even more powerful. And that is our folly. So can we take away any lessons from these three names? Al-Samad, Al-Qadir, and Al-Muqtadir. You know, one lesson um, we can take away is that we should put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything we do. If you know what you're doing is halal, if you know what you're doing is right, whether it's a small menial task or making big life-changing decisions, we should remind ourselves that there's no army in this world that can harm us unless it is willed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And similarly, there's no amount of wealth, children, or relationships in this world that can benefit us unless it is willed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another lesson we can take away is that we need to find ways to be productive so that we maximize our time in this world. And our productivity should be for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which means staying within those guardrails. And when we learn knowledge that will bring us closer to Allah, or knowledge that will increase us in wealth so that we can give away more to those who are in need, these are acts of goodness that will bring us closer, or examples of acts of goodness that will bring us closer to our Creator. And working to benefit those who are, who are in our care is also an act of charity that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even something as simple as a smile to a stranger or somebody you've never seen before is charity, as uh, Prophet you know, has used to do that, and that's um, been known through the hadith as well, that you know, smile is charity to the next person. So in short, we need to intentionally seek out opportunities to do good every single day so that we ourselves become better, not just as human beings, but also as Muslims. And it's those little acts, little, you know, starting with just the intention that we should strive, inshallah, to do more of. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate our understanding of the Quran so that we may begin to and continue to live our lives under the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, within the rails that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. And may Allah increase us in knowledge, give us wisdom, that is, give us the ability to apply this knowledge when we need it most, not just keep this knowledge to ourselves. I seek forgiveness from Allah for me and for you and to the rest of the Muslims. So ask him for forgiveness. He is the forgiver, the merciful. My dear brothers and sisters, let us you know, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah guides our hearts towards him. May we all find the strength and find the, the strength to stay firm on the path of Allah. And may Allah give us the intentions as well as the time and the opportunity and the inclination to read and study the Quran, reflect on the Quran, and then go out and then share that knowledge. Because at the end of the day, the way we learn is by giving away, giving away that knowledge. The way we learn charities by giving away money, having less, but knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there to take care of us. So inshallah khair, may Allah uh, accept our dua, and may Allah accept our um, charities, and may Allah accept um, you know, the way we live our life, all the good deeds, and multiply them um, for us, inshallah khair. Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa zuriyatina wa kurata yunin wa jalla lil muttaqina imama. Rabbana faqfil lana zunubna wa kafir anna sayyatina wa tawafana ma labrar. رب جعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن زرياتي ربنا وتقبل دعاء ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا عليك توكلنا وعليك نبنا وعليك المصير ربنا لا تجعلنا فتنة للذين كفروا واغفر لنا ربنا إنك أنت العزيز الحكيم ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاسرين ربنا آمنا فاغفر لنا وارحمنا وأنت خير الرحمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي 
يعزكم لعلكم تذكرون لا اله الا الله سبحانك اني كنت من الظالمين سبحان ربك رب العزه اما يصفون وسلام للمرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين امين ان شاء الله may you all have a blessed jama and uh, wish you all well